Okay, so here we are today. Um, we have been talking about writing and editing and all those fun, awesome things. You know, we really should talk about next. I just realized. Well, actually, no, because this is a good time to throw in this. Because I was going to say about formatting your book. Okay. But while you're formatting your book, you can have people reading it. Because Abigail wanted to talk about better readers today. Actually, just something against something to <laughs> Abigail has done a lot with finding better readers, though. Um, I've done a lot of better reading. And a lot of better reading. Exactly. I'm not very good at it. <laughs> not very good at it. How can you not be very good at it? Isabel, we have to close the mail so it doesn't sit there and pop. It's really obnoxious. I forgot to do that. Um, okay, so anyways, we want to talk about... <clears throat> Finding better readers. So you have your draft and you have your book and everything is all edited. We're not gonna get into the formatting just yet. We will do formatting on the next Basically one. it's edited and readable. It's readable, yes. And actually now is a good, good time to find better readers too because after you've done a lot of the editing yourself, mm -hmm. your better readers are also gonna find some additional mistakes yeah. and things like that too Definitely. before you do the formatting. So this is perfect. Yeah. All right, tell us about better readers. What is a better reader to begin with? How about that? There's someone who reads your book before you publish it and gives you feedback. Wow, that is so simple. Where's the best place to find better readers? Well, let's see. What's your favorite social media platform? Twitter. Twitter. <laughs> the writing community. The only problem with uh, a lot of times, if you find better readers on Twitter, they're either going to want to do a swap or mm -hmm. something to that effect. Like sometimes if they have a published book, you read it and review it, or if they also have a draft, you get to give them feedback on it. Mm -hmm. Some of them, um, you want to find a good critique partner. Yeah, and some so of them- Somebody I mean, you can work with. There's also there, oh, I know I've seen there's a lot of places where there's also this, they, they charge um, mm -hmm. for better reading, where you can literally, um, you can buy, you know, a, like a package where you have 20 people read your book yeah. and um like one of them i found it was you know forty five hundred dollars mm -hmm. to have you know you can pay forty five hundred dollars you have 20 people read and critique your book mm -hmm. and um that's not really a bad thing i mean you know it can be useful but at the same time i think that that i have a feeling that the quality on that would probably be a little bit less. No, than, if someone's being paid to read your book, then it's not, they don't have the same passion for it. Yeah. They're not going to be as enthusiastic about finishing it. They're not going to be excited about it. Yeah. And they're not going to be necessarily um, as honest because, like, from that, they're going to look at it differently. It's like, um, I don't know. Okay. So I've done a lot of freelance writing, mm -hmm. for example. And there's those websites where you go and they're like, you know, you can uh, have a job with them and you can just be a freelance writer. And, you know, you, here's your list of subjects for the week and you can do this and this and that. Yeah. Um, but the problem is, is you don't have, then you don't have like a personal interest in no, the stuff that you're writing about. And I think that it would be the same for right. better readers. It's like, you don't have, whenever you do have, a, it doesn't, you don't want it to be an overly personal necessarily, mm -hmm. but if you have some sort of personal investment in um the relationship like a little bit you know just being friends um yeah i think your opinion matters more and yeah. you're able to give a better opinion and you look at the work um from a different standpoint yeah you're all, maybe because well, for, you don't have to go oh this is my assignment and then also you <clears throat> if you know the person and you have more of a understanding how much um different feedback like they need mm -hmm. or what they can take. Yeah, things. that too. That too. And you know that if you, you know, give them a sarcastic joke or whatever the heck, they'll understand that maybe, you know. Yeah. Because yeah, that can, can be awkward. Yeah, you're you can joke around. If you're like, oh, this part's so terrible. And then they're like, 
What did you mean by that? Yeah. And because well, whenever we say terrible, we mean it yeah. differently. Oh, this so, coffee's yeah. terrible. You wouldn't want any. Exactly. Yeah. It's like okay. Um. Well, with art, for example, we we talk a lot about art because it's one of our big things here. Like I could tell Elsa, you know, that dragon looks just like the macaw that we used to have when it was making a really mean, nasty face. When she was like really like. Oh. But Elsa knows that I don't mean that in a negative way of criticizing her artwork. <laughs> <laughs> it looks very realistic. But he just told somebody to just like angry. told somebody to try and it looks like an angry papa. <laughs> yes, it doesn't have the same effect because Elsa knows that whenever the bird was making her face like that, she was being, you know, I mean, that's good quality work there. Would you please hold that up, actually, since we are. You know, I'm sitting here talking about it. Would you hold that up for people to see? Okay, so this is this dragon that she's looking at, working on, and it's kind of leaky. Yeah. Looking at, I'm looking at it. You're working on it. I'm looking at it. Is that leaves and such on that? Yeah, yeah. That's very, that's very cool. Okay, so back to bad readers. It's whatever you critique somebody else's work. I think it is important to have like some sort of relationship mm -hmm. with them. It can be a casual relationship. It can be. A business relationship it can be you know friendship it can it, but it is good to have um a variety of different people yeah. too and how many uh better readers would you recommend that well, a person have probably i'd say two or three mm -hmm. but if you're doing swaps like if you're swapping manuscripts that can give a little overwhelming on your end because you could be having three manuscripts to read if, if each of them only have one ah uh. Yes, and you don't want to do that. You don't want to do that. No, you don't want to do that at all. Yeah, because it's been wow, that's really it's really weird math. Yeah, it's no, that's like I don't I've done like it that kind of, I don't like that. Yeah. Yeah, I don't like that kind of math. You know, that's not the same as balance. Nope. Okay, so there so, you have it. There's some <laughs> really bad math, there, especially when I'm talking like, you know, your the manuscripts they can be you know, sixty five thousand words. I mean, you're yeah. talking about. Mm -hmm. So even whenever you're doing a swap like that, yeah, wow, that's really See, rough. If you're not doing a swap, you know, then whatever. Then but you can have a lot of generally people in your book for you. If you're gonna find people on Twitter, they're gonna be other authors and they're gonna have something for you to critique as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So even if you do that, this is something that you might even want to do um like early on in the editing process. And mm -hmm. so that it's something that you can take maybe a couple of months to do to if you really want to get the uh feedback. Mm -hmm. If you you know, because feedback can be really valuable. Yeah. Um like personally, I don't like feedback. You know, it kind of skews your own opinion of your work. Yeah. Um, well, for me, me, my, my whole thing is I, I actually, I don't like to have any type of feedback at all because <laughs> the truth is I really just don't care. <laughs> like <laughs> the kind of feedback I like to get is, wow, your work's amazing. It's the best book in no, the world. I don't even really care about that either. I don't care if people like my work or don't like my work. It's like I don't know. Um, <laughs> I don't know how to say it. You didn't drink my coffee. <laughs> like these videos, it's like there is somebody out there that likes this, and I'm sure there's a you know there's probably ten people for every person that thinks it's stupid and doesn't want to listen to me ramble on. Guess what? I don't care. Mm -hmm. I do not care about that person. I do not care if um, somebody says, "Oh, well, you should speak louder," or you should not talk with your hands or you should talk with your hands more like the, that kind of whenever it comes to critique and things like that or if it's even a story that i wrote or artwork that i've done <clears throat> or anything like that i actually don't know i usually it sounds kind of egotistical say, right? usually you just do the opposite of what i say <laughs> yeah it's like if somebody tells if somebody gives me any type of criticism so i really just defiant. don't care <laughs> i don't it's well it's not even i just yeah i just don't care about anybody what anybody else says um if somebody has a suggestion that i find to be useful if it yeah. you know if it's a good suggestion well, um that is something to keep in mind though like 
you can't follow everybody's advice. Exactly. Especially if you have two or three different people reading your book being like, you know, I kind of hated this part, but I really love this part. That's no, my that point. Like, what are you talking about? That's my point. So whenever it comes to better readers, I think that better yeah. readers are very valuable for some people though, too. There's some yeah. people that they're valuable for and other people that might not need a better reader. I mean, just because you're writing a book does not mean you have to go out and get a better reader. That's if you're confident in your work and you just simply don't give a crap what anybody thinks about it, then don't worry about it. I mean, it's still good to have somebody maybe look at it or maybe even yourself read through it, mm -hmm. sit down for a month, walk, you know, walk away from it yeah. and come back and read it again with a completely different perspective. Personally, I just like to have a friend or so <clears throat> read it because I like to share before it's published because yeah, I that's just, just, and I just want to yeah, you know. Like, that's different too. Mm -hmm. I don't have that either. I don't, that's, I don't know. Don't <laughs> I don't, I don't know anything like that. I'm just like, okay. I just want to share it. Is. Like, oh, look, I wrote a book. See, that's, yeah, that's completely different. Let me read it. Anyways, what we're, we're, back to our original, we are getting sidetracked here again. Oh, yeah, as usual. Um, so on Twitter, we do, okay, half the reason we like Twitter too is um, like Twitter is really, Twitter has one of the most amazing writing communities that there is. I don't care what you're, your, yes, yeah, the most engaging, most active, you are not going to find a better group of people for writing. And it does not matter if, you know, what side of the, this you're on or what your, this is, what your, what your opinions, what your views are. It doesn't even matter. Nobody, nobody cares. You're going to find your little, you know, spot in the Twitter community, the writing, Twitter writing community that is like where you just fit in. You're going to find people that you vibe with. I mean, that's, it's amazing. So I just want to point that out too. The Twitter is is completely different um, for the writing community. It's it, it's my favorite for the writing community. Now, see, I like LinkedIn for you know this purpose. I like Facebook for this purpose. I like Instagram for this purpose. But for writing community, it's I'm Twitter all the way, hundred okay, percent. So uh, LinkedIn or Facebook. Yeah, we'll say I use them for other things. I I, I have, but different, completely different. Mm -hmm business platforms they're useful for. I mean, I, that's really what it boils down to. I don't think that I'm <clears throat> for writing, not for writing and not for books. Mm -hmm. Okay, so back to the whole thing on Twitter and better readers. So we find Twitter to be a good place and how you do this is, I mean, hopefully you already have a Twitter account and that you are already actively engaged in the writing community. And if you have a question as to how to get actively engaged in the writing community, all you do is use the hashtag writing community. And that is the hashtags are how you get involved in other with the community with other people. I don't know if people understand how that works. Maybe you could sort of explain that a little bit too. Do you feel like explaining a little bit with the hashtags? I'm trying to think of a good metaphor. Okay. So hashtags are like keys that open doors to communities. <laughs> okay, well, actually, hashtags on Twitter. Now we're specifically talking I'm about Twitter. Twitter. Hashtags on Twitter are doors. Okay, there. She's got a metaphor. I mean, there we go. They're the door. They're the or the building. If you use the hashtag, is the is the building. So you don't want to use too many of them. Yeah, if you use too many, right? Won't, won't follow you or retweet your stuff. Well, that's why. Okay, so the hashtags on Twitter and. Uh, like four to five, like five is like your max. Mm -hmm. Two to three is better. Usually, sometimes I end up throwing a little extra because I'm like, oh wait, what about this? So, or they're all, or they're just all related, and I just want to make sure, like, it has you know, writers. I'll, I'll tag writers, mm -hmm. writing, and writing community, and it all means the same thing. Usually, I just use like <clears throat> writing community and writers cafe. Mm -hmm. Writers cafe is a new one that they made up because the writing community was uh, getting a little extra promotional mm -hmm. so they move yes a lot of the community that. to the cafe oh that's cool but, okay and then there's also am writing that's another one um then there's am writing every genre possible <laughs> yeah am yeah specifically genre yeah. specific there's like am um, writing fantasy am writing this am writing that yes and also just simply um 
following people that are in your genre mm -hmm. and have a sim have similar interests as you, um, mm -hmm. that's how you're going to find your people. And you yes. want to build up your own people. And now I do want to point out too, I've said this a million times um, in other ways, um, other capacities with Twitter in particular. Well, okay. So with Twitter, whenever, the, whenever you're going to follow people um, and gain followers, you do not, other authors are not necessarily your audience. And so we have a little bit of a, you want to have a balance because you do want to have other authors that you're friends with and that you interact with and that you engage with and you support each other. But you do want to have that. Your marketing is not towards but your authors. But any of your marketing or your, you know, if you're saying, oh, hey, buy my book or whatever, you're not, you do not want to promote that to your author friends. Now, those aren't the people you go to <clears throat> for like buying your book and stuff. A lot of them are really, really supportive and will buy your book just yes. because they want to. But they're not the people you say, oh, hey, buy my book, buy my book. Right. And I almost, I, I, I think one of the best things to do in this case is actually, as a writer, is almost have two separate Twitter accounts. And that's they're really hard to, to manage. Sometimes whenever you get into to having too many accounts, it's, I, I see it as a, you know, you can have your author um, Twitter account to where you're just strictly interacting with other authors and stuff, mm -hmm. or, and you can have one for your book or your book series or something to that effect. But if you can keep it on one account, it's better to keep it on one account. Mm -hmm. If you can keep maintain that balance. I mean, that's really all it boils down to. So is maintaining the balance so that you're not alienating either your readers or other authors you are engaged with. I mean, you have to kind of have a, or it can be, sometimes it can be as simple as using different hashtags mm -hmm. and having, um, that's really interesting. I never thought about that. Oh, that's always mm -hmm. been one of my big things. I've, I've um, always had a, a major thing is you want to have, I've written a lot, I guess you, Sorry, I didn't follow your blog. Or all oh my goodness! Ten years ago, before I was still on the internet. Oh my goodness! I can't believe you. You did not read all my stuff that I posted ten years ago. Whenever no. you were a child. No. I'm so disappointed. I'm sorry. What about you? I failed you as a dog. You, you failed you. You didn't read any of my posts. No, I didn't. Okay, so anyway, I didn't even know what a website was. I was on playing with sticks <laughs> and mud. Okay, so. All right, that is one of the big things I've always said. And um, wow, that's pretty neat that you're just learning it for the first time. Um, <laughs> it's kind of like, are you serious? Okay, so. Hey, I know what you're talking about. Okay, well, you've heard me. You, you pay attention. Maybe she just pay attention more than you do. Do a thing about it. Mm -hmm. Anyways, yes, your audience is not other authors. So that's something to keep in mind. I guess we'll talk I about that. that. We do, sh we should cut this off a little bit short. I think our videos, we've been getting really long. Yeah. They've been like 30 minutes. And I don't, I mean, you know, I don't know if anybody really wants to listen to us ramble on for 30 minutes. So, yeah, I mean, um, but we should have something with the hashtags. Yeah, we should probably do it. A couple more. episodes on social media. And then, um, yes. Definitely do some more on social media. Some about just your mm -hmm. audience and <clears throat> them. And actually how to how to use all different just because yeah. we prefer Twitter doesn't mean that we don't know how to use or don't um use use other platforms like I said. I also really enjoy Instagram. Mm -hmm. It's not oh, as fast paced necessarily. One of my favorite I to see, I'm sorry, I didn't know yeah. one of my favorite things that I love seeing actually that authors are using really well is interest. Oh, I have interest. So really much. Impre well, no, but I'm really impressed mm -hmm. with how some authors are using Pinterest to promote their books to in a really tasteful, beautiful way. We're gonna have to do like yes, so we're gonna have to do platform, at least. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. We have a, we have a ton we have for each um, social media platform. So. Okay, we are going to cut it off then for today. Mm -hmm. um, Elsa, do you have anything else to add? Um, actually, I do want to ask you one one quick thing. It's let's see about art critiquing. 
do you like to have other people like look at your art? I mean, that's kind of like a similar thing as better reading. Do you have a need or interest? Is it helpful to you to have other people like critique your art? No. No. No, yeah. it's the same thing. Um, maybe it's, we are both Leos too. Um, that actually could have something to do with it. Yeah, so I don't like, want to care about anybody's opinion. Like, I've had people give me their opinion on my art and they're like, you know, it stinks. I'm like, Okay, cool. Well, keep making it. <laughs> keep making it. Just all make it. I'm not changing it for you because you know, other people love it. So yeah, yeah. You've had so many people tell you how that you know beautiful and awesome it is, and yeah, but it is. So yeah, why should I change it? Basically, my why should I change it? But my uh, person doesn't like it. My response to people mm -hmm. saying your writing sucks is cool. As long but, as but I don't, and I don't like you anyway. As 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 I don't, I don't want you to read it. For people who <laughs> I know and appreciate my writing, I'm like, oh look at this alternative piece. You want to read it? You know, yeah, and they're like, oh, yes, I can't that's, wait. And that's a little difference where, like, yeah. I know that they like it already. So, mm -hmm. as long as I know I love it, I don't care what anyone else thinks. Of course. There's I think it actually, I, I think, think that you that's. Know, you get more people who, you know, really actually like it. It's genuine. And you love what you're doing. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because the more you love what you're doing, the more passionate you are about it, the easier yeah. it is for you to, you know, talk about it. And yeah, absolutely. So I guess we could throw out the, you know, like Gary Vee is always saying yeah. about, you know, do what you love and it'll, everything else will just yeah. fall into place. Do what makes you happy and do what you love and, you know, work hard at it as well. Not yeah, just, it's not, it's not, not like just, just not go just play happy. around and, you know, do nothing, but okay. So here we are. We're cutting this off again. <laughs> so thank you everybody and have a beautiful, wonderful, magical day. The Bye, Prosper. <laughs>